You don't have to be the imitation of a man. You can wear a pastel suit. You can wear a dress. You can wear a floral dress. You can wear high heels if you want to wear high heels. You can embrace your femininity and still be smart, still be successful, still be your best self. We should never hide our femininity. We should never be ashamed of the curve of our body. We should never be ashamed of our desire to dress up. We should never be ashamed of our desire to do our hair and makeup. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. If this is your first time visiting my channel, we are all giving you a very warm welcome. And to all my returning subscribers and viewers, you guys get your extra little hug as per usual for supporting the channel and our community. I know you guys want me to talk about feminine fashion and how to dress more femininely. Does dressing femininely mean looking like a girly girl? Do I have to have those pink polka dots, bows, you know, all those things that are stereotypically feminine. And today, I'm sure you already know what I'm about to say, but the answer is absolutely not. You can dress femininely without being an exaggerated version of girliness. The key is knowing the five different areas that make up your look and using those areas to insert or remove extra femininity. And we are going to explain what all of this means, so sit tight. All right, ladies, so does dressing femininely mean that this is our future? Do we need to have those pink ruffles? Do we need the floral? Do we need the polka dots? What does it mean to look feminine? In the West, there has been this push, as you might have recognized, for women to be more masculine and men to be more feminine. And as a result, we have this kind of homogenous androgynous fashion across the world. We have this, this style that works for men and women. It's often a pant with a looser shirt or sweater. So today, I really want to move away from that androgyny and from that masculine clothing, not because it's ever wrong or immoral to dress those ways, but because today we're talking about being more feminine. We need to discuss the five areas that make up your outfit. Number one, hair and makeup. Number two, the silhouette of your outfit. Number three, the colors you're wearing. Number four, the patterns. And number five, your accessories. So we're going to start with number one, your hair and makeup. Now, historically in the West, Longer hair has been perceived as more feminine in our culture, but that doesn't mean that goes the same for every single culture or every single type of person or ethnicity or whatever. So if we are going to make the area of hair and makeup more feminine, we are going to want to include a more polished hairstyle, something that really flatters your face and your features. You can also achieve a dichotomy from masculinity with hairstyles as well that men don't do, like a very ornate side braid, a very beautiful ponytail, you could do a very chic low bun, you know, those things are going to look feminine because it's not something you see on a man and that's usually how you can describe masculinity and femininity what's the opposite look like in general though long or short that feminine hair has a level to it where it's healthy it's vibrant it's it looks put together and polished and beautiful and it really plays up the beauty of the overall woman as well with makeup we can really set our ourselves apart from that masculine look by applying makeup the secret that not a lot of people will admit is that men's faces and women's faces without makeup are more similar looking than they are when women put on makeup because when we put on makeup we're playing up our eyes we're playing up our lips and we're playing up those feminine features so when you strip away a lot of that makeup, women look more natural and even a little bit more androgynous often in their face. And if you can't show your hair according to your religion, work with the scarves to have that sweeping kind of 
look that draws attention to your features, to your face. That's really what feminine hair and makeup is all about. It's about drawing attention to that feminine beauty that you all possess. All right, the second part of the feminine formula to your outfit is all about your silhouette. We have the opportunity to emphasize or de-emphasize our feminine figure. Most notoriously, this could mean your waist. That's a very feminine feature. For women with a straighter waist, a feminine silhouette for them could be more straighter in the middle, but really emphasize their legs or their collarbones or shoulders or neck. Anything that shows your full feminine figure is a feminine silhouette. It's not something, again, androgynous that really disguises that femininity. No, that feminine silhouette really draws it out and brings it out. And again, I'm saying silhouette because there's no need to show a ton of flesh to achieve that feminine silhouette. You want to look more feminine without being very revealing, you can achieve that just by capturing that feminine silhouette. All right, our third area is feminine colors. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Does this mean that we need to have hot pink, everything, baby blue, purples? Absolutely not. Feminine colors are the opposite of that heavy masculine colors, you know? They can be vibrant, eye-catching. I like to think of them as, as any color you would see on a flower, you know, very organic nature. Neutrals as well can be very feminine because they have that light feeling to them. So a heavy color can look feminine if it's more of a jewel tone, a royal color, um, but really here we want to stick to those natural, floral kind of colors that you would see in creation. Number four, feminine patterns and textures. This is where we get the idea of that floral dress, the ruffles, the sweeping fabrics, the flowiness, you know, you have the polka dots, the stripes, patterns that are feminine. And, and that's something that we can really have a lot of fun with. Finally, we have feminine accessories. This is very easy for most people in the West because men typically here don't wear jewelry. So any jewelry you wear is going to look more feminine. But you can also see the difference between a very straight, chunky piece of jewelry and then something more delicate. It brings attention to your beauty. We have the high heel, we have bows, we have the colors, feminine purses, scarves, things that really can really add to an outfit and, and make it more girly. But again, for most people in the West, almost any accessory is going to look more feminine because most men don't wear accessories. Now, before we go into the different combinations in this area, I want to show you guys what it looks like when you combine femininity in all of these areas. So if you have a formula that's very feminine, you're going to have feminine hair and makeup. You're going to have feminine accessories, feminine colors, feminine patterns and textures, and a feminine silhouette. So a lot of these looks are going to be very strikingly feminine, probably too much for a lot of people, but it definitely has that eye-catching femininity to it, where you look at that woman and you know she's a woman. These feminine looks, honestly, it's kind of fun to wear looks like this because you just feel like a woman. And I feel like a lot of us go throughout our lives being told that you're a girly girl or you're snobby or you're silly for dressing like a like a full-on woman but i think there's a lot of power in dressing full feminine and just owning it but really what i want to spend the most time on today is how can we infuse a dash or a speck of femininity into our outfits while we're getting used to the idea of dressing more feminine for most women we've been more masculinized especially in the west and so it's important for us to realize that we're not just going to wake up tomorrow in a pink dress and feel comfortable with it. A lot of us really need to engage with femininity in a smaller way and include pieces instead of a full-on look. So we're going to start with what it looks like to have a full feminine outfit with feminine pattern, color, and silhouette, but with masculine accessories. These looks always have a very sharp contrast to them. Even our lovely Bella Swan from Twilight wore sneakers with her prom dress. This is a very typical, almost girlish kind of young girl way to approach femininity, where you don't want to go the full nine yards. You don't want to be that full Southern Belle with the high heels, so maybe you'll put a Doc Martin or a heavier boot with the feminine outfit. 
We can also reverse this phenomenon by wearing very feminine accessories with a masculine silhouette color and pattern. This this results in an outfit that's also very striking but in a different way. It can often look very professional and, and red carpet worthy, you know, to wear a menswear suit with a high heel. So if this is you, if you like to wear a more masculine outfit or an androgynous outfit, but you want to infuse more femininity, start with your hair and makeup and then include maybe a purse. Wear a bit higher of a heel, include some more girly, feminine aspects to with your accessories and hair and makeup. That's the best way to ease into femininity, in my opinion. Next, I wanna go into textures and colors with silhouettes. So we can see here what happens when you have a masculine silhouette in a feminine color or pattern. This is very striking as well. The colors and textures don't just have to be florals and pinks and blues. It can also be a more neutral color, a willowy white, an ivory or a cream even, a taupe, beiges, lighter neutrals. Those lighter neutrals are always going to look a little bit more feminine in those masculine shapes. Next, I wanna talk about feminine silhouettes and textures with masculine colors. And this is still feminine, but it's more subtle. And a lot of women can feel more comfortable in this. If you never wear dresses and you wanna start wearing dresses, don't start with a hot pink dress. Don't start with bright red. Don't start with light blue. Start with darker colors and ease your way into it. This can still look very professional and, and lovely, but it's, it has that heavier masculinity to it and, it and it can be very striking. Next, I wanna talk about masculine outfits with feminine hair and makeup. This is probably the most popular style I've seen amongst teenagers. A lot of younger girls aren't yet confident in their bodies, but they're more confident in their face. Well, this is another way to maybe upgrade your femininity by working on your hair and makeup, even if you have to wear like a uniform to work. Accepting our femininity can be difficult because a lot of us have been told ever since we were young to be more masculine. But if you start with your clothing, you would really be surprised at how much that impacts your overall femininity. And I don't think that women need to be men in order to be successful. You don't have to be the imitation of a man. You can wear a pastel suit. You can wear a dress. You can wear a floral dress. You can wear high heels if you wanna wear high heels. You can embrace your femininity and still be smart, still be successful, still be your best self. We should never hide our femininity. We should never be ashamed of the curve of our body. We should never be ashamed of our desire to dress up. We should never be ashamed of our desire to do our hair and makeup. A lot of women experience that. And it's up to us to not let other people stop us from wearing what we want to wear and from being confident in our womanly self. I've had so many times in my life where I've been wearing a dress and someone says, why are you so dressed up? But then you just keep wearing a dress day after day and then they get used to it. You know, I think a lot of people try to keep other people down from dressing the way they want to by making weird comments like that. All you have to do is push through and let people get used to it. I dress the way that I feel the most confident in and I dress in a way that does not hide that I'm a woman. And again, that doesn't mean wearing very revealing clothing. It just means emphasizing my femininity. And so if you're looking to do this, but you're afraid of what people will say, that might happen. You know, people are ridiculous and anytime they see change, they're going to comment on it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like it. Just because people notice that you've changed and they draw attention to it, doesn't mean that that change is a bad thing. If you want to dress differently, do it. If you want to dress more femininely, do it. You might get a few comments along the way, but sacrificing years of your life just so that you'll avoid a little bit of awkwardness isn't worth it. You're going to be happier when you follow your natural instincts and do your hair and makeup the way you want to, when you dress in that feminine way that you want to. You're going to feel released and free from a lot of that stress and frustration. People might tease you for wearing dresses. They might tease you for wearing a high heel. Don't let that stop you. Part of being a strong and feminine woman and nurturing yourself is to not allow the comments of other people to prevent you from doing what you know is best. If that's you, if you're scared of wearing feminine clothing because of what people will say, 
just know that so many women have gone before you to do that and it's never going to change if we all hide our femininity and if we never wear feminine clothes even though we want to so today ladies my global sisters i just encourage you if you desire to dress more femininely but you're afraid start small start with your accessories start with a color start with a silhouette and branch out from there let people get used to it, but don't let them hold you back from doing what you know is best for you so that you can thrive. Your loved ones should want you to blossom, and if you blossom in a dress, if you blossom in a high heel or with an extra coat of mascara, let it be so. People who want you to blossom will be happy that you're thriving, and people who want you to fail or come down to their level will be rude to you about it and will try to hold you back. Step away from those insults and step into your natural femininity and what you know is best. This is only for women who want to dress more femininely. It's not saying that every woman should dress more femininely. It's up to you ultimately for what you feel is best and what you know deep down would work for you. All right, ladies, thank you so much for watching. Harley has been sleeping here the whole time, keeping us company. Oh, you hear your name? Yes, she wants belly rubs. <laughs> I had a lot of fun talking about this today, and we're going to dive into, in the future, into more conversations about feminine clothing and femininity in general. But just know, again, remember your global sisters. You are not alone, and every day, step more into what you know is best and step away from the lies of society if those don't feel right to you. If you liked the video, please like the video. It helps other feminine women find us. And as always, it would be wonderful if you would subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a new video. To everyone curious about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, please feel free to follow me on Instagram. And if you're hungry for more of this content, check out my written blog. I never fail to write three times a week. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderfully blessed and feminine day.